Jesus talks about a parable of the unjust judge and how willing he is to speedily answer those who call upon him. And even after that, he says, but will I find faith on the earth? truth is we find more faith in doctor's offices than we do in Christian gatherings. Let me give you some tools tonight. Wow, there's so much smoke in here. One of the people I saw in the heavenly gathering this evening was Daniel. And he's one of my favorite prophets in all of the scriptures. What a special, special person. This was a man who lived in Babylon este era un hombre que vivía en Babilonia, but he was not part of Babylon. Pero no era parte de Babilonia. And that is one of the best examples you can have for living in a system that wants to control you que quiere y desea controlarte. through fear A través de miedo. through all kinds of hardships and anxieties and stress and yet Daniel was able to depend on his relationship with his Lord he went so far as to change his diet when he went to Babylon and I think that speaks volumes. If you stop what you intake, you can start to change the way you think. Little things like eating affect how you think. But we're so conditioned for comfort and all the other things that we've grown up expecting <laughs> that it's very difficult to do without things that we have grown accustomed to liking. 
And desire is the strongest impulse in the human body. It carries a frequency that absolutely controls most of the other frequencies in our organs. Lleva consigo una frecuencia que controla todas las otras frecuencias de nuestros órganos. And the only frequency that overrides that desire. Y la única frecuencia que va por encima de esa frecuencia. Is when you love someone more than you love yourself. Es cuando tú amas a alguien más que lo que tú te amas a ti mismo. And Daniel loved him his heavenly father more than he loved himself. And that created within heaven the desire from heaven to give him what he wanted. And before I started fasting, he was the man that I studied the most. Y antes de yo comenzar a ayunar, él fue el hombre que yo estudié de, de mucho más. Because the system that he operated in is the system that seeks to destroy human beings. Porque el sistema en el cual operaba es el sistema que busca destruir al ser humano. So when Daniel went before the Lord to ask him, Así que cuando Daniel fue y se presentó delante del Señor para preguntarle, Heaven responded. El cielo respondió. And his writings are some of the most misunderstood in the scriptures. There's been all kinds of theologies written about what Daniel has said in chapter 9, chapter 8, chapter 7. And tonight I want to challenge you with some things that I want you to search out. One of the, or probably the reason we named this conference what we named it, came from the scripture in chapter 7 of Daniel. Vino a nosotros de las escrituras del capítulo 7 de Daniel. So I want you to turn to chapter 7, please. And this is Daniel speaking beginning in chapter 11. Chapter 7, verse 11. En el verso 11, este es Daniel hablando. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous words which the horn was speaking. I watched till the beast was slain and its body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Yo entonces miraba a causa de la voz de las grandes palabras que hablaba el cuerpo. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the ancients of days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Y fue dado señorío y gloria y reino, y todos los pueblos y lenguas le sirvieron su señorío, señorío eterno, que no será transitorio, y su reino que no se corromperá. And I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. 
mi espíritu fue turbado, yo Daniel en medio de mi cuerpo y las visiones de mi cabeza me asombraron. Now those few verses explain something that took place hundreds of years later. Estos versículos explican una serie de cosas que sucedieron cientos de años más tarde. And the interpretation of these verses has what has so many people confused. Y la interpretación de estos versos es lo que tiene a tanta persona confusa. Daniel is seeing something in a vision. Daniel está viendo algo en una visión that we know to be the Father and the Son. What we don't understand is that transformation that was taking place over this period of time. All the speakers today have been showing us that the picture in heaven is much different than the picture we see from this dimension. And without an understanding of the history of the Jews, it's very difficult to understand what is being written about. Es muy dificultoso entender de qué se ha estado escribiendo. The same thing happens in the book of Revelation. Lo mismo sucede en el libro de Apocalipsis. Whenever someone talks about Revelation or they talk about the prophetic books, there's this immediate block. Inmediatamente que se habla del Apocalipsis o se habla de la Revelación, inmediatamente se levanta un bloqueo. That prevents us from understanding that everything is written about Christ. If you don't settle the one fact about the Bible, you will live in confusion when you try to read it. The Bible is written about Christ. It's not written about anybody else. No ha sido escrita para nadie más. Everything points to him. Todo apunta hacia él. Everything points to him. Todo apunta hacia él. If it starts to move you in a direction of anything other than him, anyone's interpretation is different than directing you towards Christ, una interpretación de otro que te hace a ti moverte y, y es diferente a tú acercarte a Cristo. A red light should come on inside of you. Una luz roja debe encenderse de ti. You should stop right there. Deberías detenerte en mis. And ask the Holy Spirit, what is this verse talking about? Y deberías preguntarle al Espíritu Santo, ¿de qué está hablando este verso? That is the understanding you must have every time you read prophetic scripture. Este es el entendimiento que debes tener cada vez que lees escritos proféticos. There's lots of historical books that shows what happened to Israel in 70 AD. Hay muchos libros históricos que muestran y enseñan qué sucedió con Israel en el 70 después de Cristo. But very few Christians ever know or did, do not know, they're not taught that that was the destruction of Israel. Pero a muy pocos cristianos se le enseñado o no conocen que esa fue la destrucción de Israel. Jerusalem was burned with fire and the temple destroyed. Jerusalén fue quemada con fuego y el templo destruido. Everything changed after that. So when you have an understanding of the historical Jerusalem, then you can start to put a lot of the pieces together that are being written in the book of Revelation. You see, Daniel only had really one vision. Daniel solo tuvo una visión. It was the golden and bronze statue. Era la estatua de bronce y de oro. Everything else in the scriptures was explaining the destructions of those kingdoms. Y todo lo demás en las escrituras era una explicación de las destrucciones que vendrían a través de esos reinos. And it was hard for Daniel to grasp. 
It was very difficult for him to think that here he is in captivity in Babylon. And he knows the power and the authority of his God. And yet he's being shown that that covenant with those people would end in 490 years. That's what the 70 weeks is about. And it might interest you to know that the book of Revelation was probably the first book written in the New Testament. So part of the tools I want to give you tonight is some of the history. And I don't want to labor on the history. I want you to search it out. That have to do with the seven heads, the ten horns, the one horn that was the pompous horn, and how it applies to the priesthood of that time. You see, God judges idolatry. He's always judged idolatry. So when he started to see the idolatry in the people of Israel, after he delivered them out of Egypt over and over again they kept going back to idolatry the books are filled with the kings that they brought and how they went back to idolatry after they repented so he delivered them from Egypt but he led them into Babylon so that the history could be completed so that we as a people para que nosotros, como pueblo, can understand the absolute sovereignty la and the absolute love God has for every human being on the planet. God was never surprised what Adam did. He was never surprised what Israel would do. But his long suffering and mercy is something no one can ever understand. And the minute you try to write a theology or a doctrine about it, you'll miss what he's doing. Tonight we turn the page in our spiritual life. From this night forward, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to write your life story. Verse 19. Then I wished to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, with teeth of iron, nails of bronze, which devoured, broken in pieces, and trampled the rest do with its feet, residue with its feet. Entonces tuve 
mi deseo es saber la verdad acerca de la cuarta bestia, que tan diferente era de todas las otras, espantosa en gran manera, que tenía dientes de hierro y uñas de metal que devoraba y desmenuzaba y las obras y las obras hollaba con sus pies. And the ten horns that were on its head and the other horns which came up before which three fell, namely that horn which had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them, until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Asimismo, acerca de los diez cuernos que tenía en su cabeza, y del otro que había subido, de delante del cual habían caído tres, y este mismo cuerno tenía ojos y boca que hablaba grandezas, y su parecer mayor que el de sus compañeros, y veía yo que este cuerno hacía guerra contra los santos, y los vencía, hasta tanto que vino el anciano de grande edad, y se dio el juicio a los santos del Altísimo, y vino el tiempo, y los santos poseyeron el rey. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. Dijo así, la cuarta bestia será un cuarto reino en la tierra, el cual será más grande que todos los otros reinos, y a toda la tierra devorará, y hollará, y la despedezará. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> the ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and, shall, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law, then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half a time. Y los diez cuernos significan que de aquel reino se levantarán diez reyes, y tras ellos se levantará otro, el cual será mayor que los primeros, y a, y a tres reyes derribará, y hablará palabras contra el Altísimo, y a los santos del Altísimo quebrantará, y pensará, pensará en mudar los tiempos y la ley y entregados serán en su mano hasta tiempo y tiempos y el medio de un tiempo. Now the, Daniel is seeing all of this taking place. And he's hearing what this is. And he's not understanding what's going on. This is four and five hundred years later. But what he is feeling and sensing inside is breaking him. And you see, prophecy is designed to break you. Prophecy is designed to show you what you don't know. La profecía ha sido diseñada para mostrarte aquello que tú no conoces. And it's not designed for you to receive something from somebody else. Y no ha sido diseñada para que tú recibas algo de otra persona. Other than the Holy Spirit. Que no sea el Espíritu Santo. Listen, revelation is not revelation unless you have it. La revelación no es revelación a menos que tú la tengas. I can't give you revelation. Yo no puedo darte a ti revelación. Revelation comes from the Holy Spirit to you. La revelación and if it's truly from the Holy Spirit it should shake your understanding it should change the way you think it should absolutely challenge your foundational beliefs brother there's a Daniel anointing on you yeah. Yeah. 
So when Daniel is receiving this Holy Spirit driven revelation, it was designed to point people to their Messiah. It wasn't for tribulation and destruction. You know, we have this idea that all prophecy has to do with judgment from God. No, it's designed to save you from the judgment from God. That's why God is so particular with the prophetic. He says it's not my desire that none should perish. Zero. Zero. He wants all to understand what the living Christ has done for you. But all the theologies and the doctrines that we've all been inundated with and brainwashed by don't release faith. They release fear. Am I right? But that's not the design of God. His design is to show you that His Word is true and righteous and delivering. He has to deliver us from ourself because our self will lead us to destruction. If we're led to our own devices, we'll fall in a ditch. That's why tonight when he showed up with so much love in his eyes for every one of us, it was a river running through here. So Daniel is seeing all of these things. He's not understanding it. And then we come to the part where this conference was named from. And in verse 26. It says, but the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Y quitarles su señorío para que sea destruido y arruinado hasta el extremo. Y que el reino y el señorío y la majestad de los reinos debajo de todo el cielo sea dado al pueblo de los santos del Altísimo, cuyo reino es el reino eterno, y todos los señoríos le servirán y obedecerán. Amen. So heaven has already made the judgment. Heaven has already done what needed to be done to make sure his kingdom is forever. It will never be left up to a man to fall again. Remember, God made covenant with himself before he made covenant with Abraham. So that there could be no failure. The Father and the Son made covenant with one another for the reconciliation of all men after Adam would fail. Before the foundation of the world. Look in 1 Peter. Verse 
verse 20. Verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 20. Capítulo 1, verso 20. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Ya ordenado de antes de la fundación del mundo, pero manifiesto en los eh, postrimeros tiempos por amor de vosotros. Now, we have to understand that world and earth are not the same. Debemos entender que el mundo y la tierra no es la misma cosa. It's been used to mean the same thing, but it's not. Ha sido utilizado para significar lo mismo, pero no lo es. The heavens and the earth have always been gods. Porque el cielo y la tierra siempre han sido de Dios. Man creates his world by what he believes. El hombre crea su mundo debido y a través de aquello que cree. Free will is the, everybody's choice. Es el tu poder escoger que todos podamos escoger. So when we read the scripture that everybody on the Western world has probably heard, for God so loved the world. What did he love? I mean, Jesus purchased it with his blood. What did he purchase? The dirt, the dust, the ground? Every human being. Every human being that he gave a choice to. He died for every human being. Because every human being has the right to choose what they believe. But he loves you so much that he'll wait till your dying breath for you to choose him. Every spirit comes from the Father. Cada del Padre. He's the Father of all spirits. Él es el Padre de todos los It's your soul es tu alma. where your decision-making process takes place. Donde el de tomar se lleva a cabo. And the soul is corrupted at birth because of the first Adam. So it's incumbent upon every living spirit to know what Christ did so they can make the choice to receive what he did. Y escoger y elegir lo que él hizo. So salvation is the easy part for humanity. Así que la salvación es la parte fácil para la humanidad. It's giving everything you have to him that's the hard part. Es tú darle todo lo que tú tienes y posees a él que es lo difícil. Because we've been taught through westernized religion that we can live in this world porque se nos ha enseñado a través de la religión del mundo occidental que podemos the consciousness of this world en la conciencia de este mundo where we can enjoy the things of this world donde podemos disfrutar de las cosas de este mundo and still have our Jesus on the dashboard y tener todavía allí en la plataforma o en la consola a Jesús or on a bumper sticker o allí tenerlo allí or on a t-shirt en el paragolpes o en la en, en, en el polo shirt doesn't mean Jesus doesn't love you. He died for your ability to choose. But when he comes, will he find faith in the earth? So when we start to read the scriptures and see the magnificent 
authority that he left with us through what he did. A nosotros leer las escrituras y descubrir la magnífica autoridad que él nos ha dado a través de lo que él hizo. We have to make the decision to leave everything that we found so comfortable in this world system. Debemos entonces tomar la decisión o hacerla de a todo aquello que hemos encontrado muy cómodo en este sistema del mundo. To serve him. Dejarlo a un lado para servirle a él. The disciples ask, what makes us the master? When you're the servant. When you're the servant. And that's all the Lord is looking for. Those with that servant's heart will give, he gives responsibility to. Al cual él le puede dar responsabilidad. He gives you the understanding that you can't find any other way. Te da una comprensión y entendimiento que no puedes conseguir de ninguna otra manera. So the body of Christ has been deformed over the ages. Así que el cuerpo de Cristo ha sido eh, deformado, mal formado a través de las edades. By be wrong believing. Por causa de las creencias equivocadas. Wrong understanding. Eh, entendimientos equivocados. It's made us helpless and crippled. Nos ha hecho nosotros eh, eh, realmente inválidos y, y no tenemos capacidad. De... Instead of living in that authority and in that place of rulership with him. En lugar de vivir en ese lugar de autoridad y de gobernación con él. And it all begins understanding what Christ completed. Y comienza todo eso al tú comprender qué fue lo que Cristo concluyó, terminó y completó. For example, look over in Revelation 13. Por ejemplo, vamos a Apocalipsis 13. Verse 8. Verso All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Y todos los que moran en la tierra le adoraron, cuyos nombres no están escritos en el libro de la vida del Cordero, el cual fue muerto desde el principio del mundo, o desde antes de la fundación del mundo. All who dwell on the earth Todos los que sobre la will worship him le o le whose names have not been written in the book of life. Cuyos no están en el libro de la vida del now remember, John is writing as a Jew, Juan está como un judío. a messianic Jew because he has received Christ but he has the understanding of the whole Hebrew understanding of that culture keep your finger there and turn over to Exodus 32 32 Exodus 32 Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book which you have written. This is Moses speaking. Está aquí hablando Moisés, 32, 32. Que perdones ahora su pecado, y si no, ráeme ahora de tu libro que has escrito. What John is referring to in this passage is what happened before the foundation of the world. Remember, the world is that consciousness of the first Adam. Acuérdate, el mundo es esa conciencia del primer Adam. 
which came from unbelief. Que vino a través de la incredulidad. Before the foundation of the world. Antes de la del mundo. Before the consciousness of sin. Antes de la del mundo. Before the Antichrist spirit entered the earth. Antes de que el sobre la God had already written your name in the book of life. Did you hear me? Your name was written in the book of life. That should be hallelujah. <laughs> that should make everyone excited. You're the only one that can remove it. You are the only one that can take your name out. That's what Jesus died for. He died that every person's name would stay in that book. So you don't have enemies. You have opportunities. You see, that's how Jesus sees what you do from heaven. Jesus didn't have enemies. He died for every person that crucified him. He knew what it would take to be the Son of God. Do you? And are you willing to do it? It says in Hebrews, he learned through discipline. Let's read it. Look in chapter 5. Verse 8. Verse 8. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Y aunque era hijo, por lo que padeció, aprendió la obediencia. Verse 9, and having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation. Not born the author of salvation. He became the author of salvation by learning obedience. Learning discipline. That's where the word disciple comes from. As you understand your position, which is available to each person who wants to enter into that prophetic dimension which you were created to do, then you have to learn discipline which is in the servanthood. I just threw that out there, whatever you want to do. Back. That, one's, that one's free. The rest is going to cost you. I'm just teasing. Okay, back to the seven horns or the seven heads and the ten horns. If you want to write some of this down, I want you to 
check it out, study it. If I had Simon's anointing for PowerPoints, I would do that. <laughs> I don't have his anointing. <laughs> there were seven Gentile kings that either ruled Jerusalem or had it in submission. And this is, the, this is in Revelation 13 when it talks about the seven head of the beast. I think that's verse... Yeah, verse 2 and 3. Okay, so the first king was from Egypt. He took over Jerusalem after Solomon's death. And if you want to look up this person's name, it was Shishkak. S-H-I-S-K. No, S-H-I-S-H-A-K. The second was Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is a very interesting king. You see, it talks about one of the heads of the seven heads being wounded to death. When Nebuchadnezzar took over Jerusalem, he took over all of Judea, which totally left Jerusalem bankrupt, destroyed, took everything out of the temple, destroyed the temple. See, the more you study the scriptures, the more you'll understand that the beast was at apostate Judaism. Which came from the corrupted priesthood. The corrupted priesthood has always been in the face of God. If you read Ezekiel, you'll see how God was so displeased with that priesthood. But if there was no Jerusalem, there was no priesthood, and if there's no priesthood, there's no beast. The beast was the apostate Jerusalem. So that seven heads did not come back to life until Cyrus sent somebody over there to build Jerusalem again. So after Nebuchadnezzar, there was Ptolemy. And that's the guy they speak about in Daniel 11.5. He was the king of the south. The fourth is Antioch or Antic Epiphanes. And he's also the one, because of the corrupted priesthood, that was allowed to go in and sacrifice the pigs inside the altar and so forth. That's the king of the north spoken about in Daniel 11. The fifth head was the Pompey the Great. And then there was Herod Agrippa the first. And then the last was Titus who destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. Now, 
Now what Daniel was seeing was on the fourth kingdom or the seventh head. Lo que Daniel estaba viendo se encontraba en el cuarto quinto eh, reino o la cabeza número siete. When he saw the ten horns. Cuando él vio los diez cuernos. And if you study the Roman history, you'll see that there was proconsuls during the time of Rome's control over Jerusalem. Beginning with Pontius Pilate, who crucified Jesus in 31 AD. That was the seventh year of the 70th week, or the, of the 490th weeks. Then Marcellus was the second proconsul, and that was from 36 to 38. Then there was a Marulus, who was 38 to 41 AD. And then in between the third, the third and the fourth, there was a three and a half year period. And during that three and a half year period, Agrippa the first, Herod Agrippa the first reigned. This was the one who persecuted the Messianic Jews at that time. He's the beast. He was the man of sin in Thessalonians. If you study how he persecuted the Christians in that time, he killed James, the brother of John. There was so much persecution going on in Jerusalem that that's when John went to the Isle of Patmos. And if you start to see the history of time, and you can get a lot of this from Josephus in the, the book he wrote about the Jews. And, Anna has written a lot about this in her book. You'll see that that period of time was the one that most of the book that John writes about in Revelation takes place. And there's four other or six other proconsuls that were ruling Jerusalem that makes the ten horns. And then John talks about how There was, or Daniel talks about this one horn that was pompous and, and had eyes of man and a pompous mouth. <clears throat> then you start to understand the priesthood that operated that time was, head, was headed up by Annas, A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Yes. He was the one that was the false prophet in the book of Revelation. He was the one that wanted to change the times and the seasons. He was the one that was really persecuting the Messianic Jews along with Agrippa the first. So they worked together to bring so much destruction during that period of time. So if you study those particular men in the, not only in history, but and plug them into the scriptures, you'll find some very interesting comparisons. Now, one of the things that I found very interesting when I was reading Daniel was how Jesus showed up to him. 
se le mostró a él. Turn to Daniel. Chapter Before we do that, let's look at Daniel 12. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such was never since there was a nation. Even to that time, and at that time, your people shall be delivered. E everyone who is found written in the book, starting with one. Dice, y en aquel tiempo se levantará Miguel, el gran príncipe que está por los hijos de tu pueblo, y será tiempo de angustia, cual nunca fue después que hubo gente hasta entonces. Mas en aquel tiempo será libertado tu pueblo todos los que se hallaran escritos en el libro. And then verse 4. But you, Daniel, shall shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Y tú, Ampero Daniel, cierras las palabras y sella el libro hasta el tiempo del fin. Pasarán muchos y multiplicarás en la ciencia. Then I heard, verse 7, Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times and a half a time, when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered. All these things shall be finished. Y oí al varón vestido de lienzos que estaba sobre las aguas del río, el cual alzó su diestra y su siniestra al cielo y no por el viviente en los siglos que será por tiempo, tiempo, tiempos y la mitad y cuando se acabare el esparcimiento del escuadrón del pueblo santo todas estas cosas serán cumplidas Although I heard, I did not understand Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end y yo ahí más no entendí y dije, Señor mío, ¿qué será el cumplimiento de estas cosas? Y dijo, anda Daniel, que estas palabras están cerradas y selladas hasta el tiempo del cumplimiento. Turn to Revelation chapter 5. Vamos a Apocalipsis capítulo 5. Beginning with verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll, a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? Y 
Y vi en la mano derecha del que estaba sentado sobre el trono un libro escrito dentro y fuera, sellado con siete sellos. Y vi un fuerte... One and two. Y vi un fuerte ángel predicando en alta voz, quien es digno de abrir el libro y desatar sus sellos. And no one in heaven or on earth, under the earth, was able to open the scroll or look at it. Y ninguno podía ni en el cielo ni en la tierra ni debajo de la tierra abrir el libro ni mirarlo. This is the book that was sealed up that Daniel had. Este es el libro que fue sellado, que tenía Daniel. This was the scroll that Jesus opened. Este fue el rollo eh, o el pergamino que Jesús abrió. Remember I said everything in the scripture is pointing to Jesus. Les dije a ustedes que todas las escrituras apuntan a Jesús. Everything in scripture is pointing to the living Christ. Y todas las escrituras apuntan al Cristo vivo. Jesus is the book. Jesús es el libro. He's the one that is the seal. It was sealed before the foundation of the world that he would bring all men back to his Father. Everything that was done by Adam was designed to trap Satan. Amen. The law was something Satan was absolutely an expert at. And the law says that if you kill an innocent man, you yourself will be killed. Well, guess who Satan killed? He sealed his own death El mismo selló su propia muerte. by thinking he was winning. Pensando que él estaba ganando. The whole thing was a design to destroy him. Todo esto era un diseño para destruirle a él. In chapter 12 of Revelation, en el capítulo 12 de Apocalipsis, we see what happens in heaven when he is exposed for his sin. Vemos lo que sucede en el cielo cuando él es expuesto por causa de su pecado. And another sign, verse 3, And another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven, and threw them into the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, who was ready to give birth to devour his child as soon as it was born. Entonces apareció otra señal en el cielo. He aquí un gran dragón rojo, que tenía siete cabezas y diez cuernos. Y sobre sus cabezas había siete diademas. Su cola arrastró la tercera parte de las estrellas del cielo y las arrojó sobre la tierra. Y el dragón se paró delante de la mujer que estaba para dar a luz a fin de devorar a su hijo cuando ella diera a luz. Turn to Luke, keep your finger there, turn to Luke 10. Vamos a Lucas 10. Look in verse 17. Mira lo que dice en verso 17 de Lucas 10. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Y volvieron los setenta con gozo, diciendo, Señor, aún los demonios se nos sujetan en tu nombre. Y les dijo, yo vi a Satanás como un rayo que caía del cielo. What John was writing, Jesus was describing to the seventy that returned. Lo que eh, eh, Juan estaba escribiendo, Jesús estaba describiéndole a aquellos 70 que regresaban. See, we don't understand the dimensions of the book because we're reading it in such a linear fashion. No entendemos las dimensiones del libro porque estamos leyéndolo en una, en una manera lineal. You have to understand the dimensions that are going on simultaneously in heaven and in earth. Tienes que entender las dimensiones que simultáneamente acontecen en el cielo y en la tierra. In heaven there's no time. Porque en el cielo no existe el tiempo. There's only events. Solamente hay eventos. The writing of your name in the book was an event in heaven. El escribir tu nombre en el libro fue un evento en el cielo. 
Satan's betrayal was an event in heaven. La traición de Satanás fue un evento en el cielo. His being cast out was an event in heaven. El ser arrojado de los cielos fue un evento. That had a temporal effect in the earth. Que tenía un efecto temporal sobre la tierra. Revelation 9. Vamos a Apocalipsis 9. Here's another picture of that same event. Aquí hay otro cuadro de este mismo evento. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. One and two. Uno y dos. Y el quinto ángel tocó la trompeta y vi una estrella que había caído del cielo a la tierra y se le dio la llave del pozo del abismo. Cuando abrió el pozo del abismo subió humo del pozo como el humo de un gran horno y el sol y el aire se oscurecieron por el humo del pozo. That was also Satan being taken to the pit. Esto es también Satanás siendo llevado allí al pozo. That's where he was bound for the first thousand years. Allí fue donde fue atado por los primeros mil años. In Revelation 20. En Apocalipsis 20. Verse 1, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and having a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is a devil, and bound him for a thousand years. Apocalipsis 20, 1, Dice, Y vi un ángel que descendía del cielo con la llave del abismo y una gran cadena en su mano, y prendió al dragón la serpiente antigua, que es el diablo y Satanás, y lo ató por mil años. John is watching all of this take place in heaven. Juan está mirando todo esto acontecer y ocurrir en el cielo. John says he was taken up into heaven. Él dice que fue él arrebatado y llevado al cielo. Remember in chapter 4? ¿Se acuerdan ustedes en el capítulo 4? After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, Jesus, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Después de esas cosas miré y he aquí una puerta abierta en el cielo y la primera voz que oía era como de la trompeta que hablaba conmigo diciendo sube acá y yo te mostraré las cosas que han de ser después de estas. Turn to Second Corinthians. Vamos a segunda de Corintios. Chapter 12. Capítulo 12. Verse 2, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a man was caught to the third heaven. Conozco un hombre en Cristo que hace 14 años, sin el cuerpo, fuera del cuerpo, no sé, eh, no lo sé, Dios lo sabe, fue arrebatado hasta el tercer cielo. How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Y cómo él fue arrebatado y llevado al paraíso y para escuchar palabras que no pueden ser declaradas por hombre. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. De este tal me gloriaré, mas de mí mismo nada me gloriaré, sino en mis flaquezas. If we look at history, we'll see that that letter was written to the Corinthians in around 53-54 AD. Si miramos la historia, esta carta fue escrita a la iglesia en el 53-54 después de Cristo. If you subtract the 14 years he's talking about, Could it be that he talked to John coming out of Patmos? Let's go to Revelation 
that would match up with the time that King Agrippa I was ruling over Jerusalem, and it was a time of the great persecution that had happened after they were being protected for that seven-year period that Jesus was on the earth. So it's not as difficult to understand what takes place when you understand it's all about Christ. When that is the key to everything you're reading in the scriptures, a lot of things will start to come to the surface that you may have questioned over the years. The reason this is important is because if you don't know what Christ has completed, you cannot release faith. No puedes desatar la fe. Amen. You can't have faith in something you're unsure of. No puedes tener fe en algo sobre lo cual no estás seguro. You must be students of the scripture to understand what Jesus has finished. Debieran ser ustedes estudiantes de las escrituras para entender qué fue lo que Cristo concluyó y terminó. Take the responsibility to build that foundation in Christ. Otherwise you'll be tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine that happens to come down the pike. Our reality depends on what we know Jesus has finished. And then when you pray for your neighbor, Entonces, cuando tú oras por tu vecino, or when you speak to someone who is not doing well, all heaven will back what you do. Todo el cielo respaldará lo que tú haces. Because all heaven bows to Christ. Porque el cielo entero dobla sus rodillas a they Cristo. know what he's done. The powers and principalities know what he's done. We're the only people that don't know what he's done. That shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. So take the tools, take the challenge to research for yourself. That's why Jesus went to heaven after he was resurrected to send you the Holy Spirit so he could teach you all things. He could teach you all things. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Three quick scriptures and we can go to bed. <laughs> Turn to Psalms 135. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him, O you servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. Salmo 135. Amén. 
Alabad el nombre del Señor, alabad de siervos del Señor. Los que estáis en la casa del Señor, en los atrios de la casa de nuestro Dios. Aleluya, porque el Señor es bueno. Cantad alabanzas a su nombre, porque es agradable. Psalms 116. Salmo 1, 35, 1, 16, perdón. Beginning with verse 8. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. I am greatly afflicted, I said in my haste. All men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all of his people. In, in verse, and I will, in verse 19, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, praise the Lord. Pues tú has rescatado mi alma de la muerte, mis ojos de lágrimas, mis pies de tropezar. Andaré delante del Señor en la tierra de los vivientes. Yo creía aún cuando decía, estoy muy afligido. Dije alarmado. Todo hombre es mentiroso. ¿Qué daré al Señor por todos sus beneficios para conmigo? Alzaré la copa de la salvación e invocaré el nombre del Señor. Y el verso 19 dice, Y en los atrios de la casa del Señor, en medio de ti, oh Jerusalén. Aleluya. Psalms 96. Salmo 95. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Cantad al Señor un cántico nuevo. Cantad al Señor toda la tierra. Cantad al Señor, bendecid su nombre. Proclamad de día en día las buenas nuevas de su salvación. Cantad su gloria entre las naciones, sus maravillas entre todos los pueblos. Porque grande es el Señor y muy digno de ser alabado. Temible es sobre todos los dioses, porque todos los dioses de los pueblos son ídolos. Mas el Señor hizo los cielos. And I really want us to look at verse 8 one more time. Y veamos el verso 8 una vez más. Give the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering unto his courts. Tributad al Señor la gloria debida a su nombre. Ofre traed ofrenda y entrad en sus atrios. We've been in his courts all day. Hemos estado en sus atrios y en su corte todo el día. And I think it's time to bring him an offering. Y yo creo que es tiempo de traerle a él una ofrenda. ¿no? To ¿no? recognize his goodness. Para reconocer su bondad. To recognize his righteousness. Para reconocer su justicia. This is the time to honor the glory of the Lord. Este es el tiempo de honrar la gloria del Señor. Can we stand to our feet? Podemos ponernos de pie. I want this to be a very special time. Yo que este sea un muy Between you and the Lord. Entre tú y el Señor. We've been in his courts all day. Hemos en sus todo el and I think it now is the time to bring an offering before him. Este es and yeah. as you do, you're glorifying his name. Y al tú hacer esto, es al you're blessing Dios. him Estás for his goodness to you, Por su bondad, for his salvation to you for what he's done for all of us. We give you glory, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We worship you with praise and honor, Lord. We know that this is a day where you've turned the page in our life. This is a new season in all of our lives. 
And we don't take this lightly, Lord. We understand that this is your season to visit your people. In a most dramatic way. In a most glorious way. And we just praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I just bless every person here tonight. I see the hearts of so many pure, wonderful, loving saints. They have stood with you. They have desired more of you. And you have been so faithful to us all. And we just want to give you thanksgiving and praise. And all glory belongs to you tonight. Receive all glory and honor. In your precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're having another day tomorrow. And it just keeps going from glory to glory. Amen. Amen. You know, it's so wonderful to be together corporately, isn't it? You know, the body of Christ is so unique, so powerful. It's so powerful. It just, ah, every time I, I come to one of these meetings where we gather together, I'm so amazed by his, his glory and his honor and his presence. And the dimensions that each one of us bring to this place he adds to it in such ways and measures that it's beyond what we can think or ask for isn't it amen I'm just I don't know if I'll sleep tonight I'm just so grateful <laughs> but I, I, I pray all of you have great rest tonight